This is a uh, first for us. Uh, I'm rolling with a co-pilot here today. This is my Hi. wife, Cynthia. <laughs> and we're going to tag team today, if that's all right. Yeah? We're good? All right. So two weeks ago, I was on a little staycation doing some work out in my backyard. And uh, there was, so the title of today's message is Another Sermon from the Backyard. <laughs> All right. So another sermon from my backyard. As I was in the backyard, um, I had rented an excavator. So I had, I was moving some boulders and rocks. And there were some trees that needed to be moved out of my way. And so since I had this excavator, and maybe you called a digger or whatever, this one had a thumb on it. Um, instead of get my chainsaw out and cut the trees down and doing all that, I figured I would just pick the trees up by their roots and just relocate them because I got a machine and I can. So let's do it. Nobody, nobody can identify with, Ugh. no, all right. I felt good about it. And I was always taught that the most important part of a tree was its roots, that the roots have to be strong and deep and healthy for nutrition and all that, so that if a storm came or the wind blew, the tree could not be knocked over. And although I'm sure that is true because that's what I learned in earth science in ninth grade, I learned a different lesson in the backyard last week. Mm -hmm. And the lesson was this. This is, this is what I learned. A tree standing all by itself had no chance against my onslaught of the excavator. Easily, I could reach that arm out and I could just whoop and push it over. Roots and all, pop right up. But a tree that had been rooted in close proximity mm -hmm. to other trees, no matter what I did, I could not knock that tree over. Yep. I couldn't knock it over. It was as if every time I pushed that tree, the other trees around it lifted up its arms, its branches, and kind of held on to it and said, ah, uh -uh, not knocking him over. I had one tree completely uprooted. I had picked it straight up, and it landed itself back down, and it stood up straight because of the other trees around it yep. holding it in Position. And I thought to myself, could this be a picture of what the body of Christ, the church, is supposed to look like? Could this possibly be, be how we are supposed to function as a church, as a body of believers? And check this out. In Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9, it says this. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to the tree in Mike's backyard, standing alone. <laughs> for when he falls, he has no one to pick him up. Yeah. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm, but how can one stay warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And this is, this is one of those um, phrases that you need to just have in your toolbox as a Christian. A three-stranded cord or three-fold cord is not easily broken. You can take one stick and break it pretty easily. You put a bunch of sticks together, try to break it. It's much more durable, right? And this is what this is talking about. A three-fold cord, when we're in unity and connected with other believers, we are not easily broken. Now, I've watched Pastor Mike take down many, many trees. We're talking almost 20 years and four homes later, I've seen all types of trees come down. Some come down really quick, and others require quite a bit of work. But there's still some that get hung up. And that means that either you've tried to cut them down or pull them up like he was, but the other trees do not let them fall. As a matter of fact, sometimes we have to cut off branches from the healthy trees just to get that one tree down. And the more I thought about this, the more I thought about who is around us. Many times you hear people talk about their squad or their crew, but a squad or a crew are not made up of just one person. It's made up of the individuals with which you surround yourself with. 
And it sounds very much like the body of Christ is described in 1 Corinthians 12. It says, for the body is not one member, but many. That's good. You see, it doesn't matter our differences as long as we're there for one another. It doesn't matter who you are. If you look at the woods behind my house, it's all different types of trees back there but they're all close together. So when Pastor Mike tried to root, uproot the ash tree, it was the cedar and the maple that kept it up. The trees were using the buddy system that we were taught in school. Yep. I had never realized until now that not only is the buddy system a good system, it's also biblical. It's shown in Ecclesiastes 4, like Pastor Mike said, with two being better than one. You see it in Jesus' life where he had his apostles and then his disciples and then his three that he took to the garden. But guess what? It's also a natural law. Did you know that in order to grow fruit trees, you need to plant two or three of the same type of trees so that they can pollinate each other because they grow when they're together. It's mm, good. Together is important. But more than that, we must be healthy. Healthy. Now, in talking with Pastor Mike, he had mentioned that trees can hold each other up if their branches are broken. How many times have you needed someone to lift you up or hold your hand, but they couldn't because they were going through something themselves? Now, life is hard sometimes, and we've all been there. But if we continue to work on ourselves and work on those around us, we can hold each other up when someone goes down. And then the next time that something happens, the person that was originally down can be the one helping someone stand. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, it says, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things. To bear means to sustain the weight of, or to move while holding up and supporting something. Yeah, say it again. <laughs> to bear means to support the weight of, or to move while holding up and supporting something. Yeah, you see, your squad, your friends, your family, the church body, whoever it is that is your go-to, they should be doing this for you. And sometimes it's going to be a quick like, oh, here you go, girl and put you back up, and then other times, they're gonna have to lift you up and walk you around. They're gonna be like, come on, walk it off. Get those legs back under Drag you. Drag you by your hair. Uh -huh. But it's our love that helps us to bear others up. Without it, we'd be kinda like those kids, those videos of the little kids that are falling all over the place. You're walking along one minute, and the next minute, well, why don't we take a look? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, mama. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. And just like that, sometimes you're just trying to mind your business and take out the trash, take and out you the wind trash. up on the floor. <laughs> but sometimes when you have people close to you, it's a little more like this. Hero dad. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Swoop. When you have a good squad, you never know which one's gonna have them ninja-like reflexes. That's it. Mm -hmm. Super dads jumping in there, rescuing, helping out. You see, it's about surrounding yourself with other healthy people. Yeah. Other healthy people to help support and sustain when you're having a bad day. You see, a broken limb can't support other trees. Yeah. Broken limbs can't support other trees. It's, it's almost like that tree starts to fall and it's like, whoop, out of the way, right? Kind of thing. Listen, now, I do believe that God wants to use the broken parts of our lives. I do believe that God wants to use the things that we struggle with the most to help others and build the kingdom. But when our limbs are broken because of 
looking at others' flaws, mm -hmm. because we're looking at other people's imperfections, you cannot help sustain them and move the kingdom of God forward. The Bible says it like this. Why are you looking at the speck in your neighbor's eye when there is a plank sticking out of your forehead, right? It says, first, remove the plank from your eye that you may help or restore the one with the speck in their eye. The things you look for, you're going to find. We talked about that a few weeks ago. You will find them. You'll find those bad negative flaws in other people, and that will not help move the kingdom of God forward. Here's what I did see as well. I did see that some of the big trees, bigger trees, that as they would fall, they would take other trees out with it, yeah. especially unhealthy, sickly, dead trees. It took very little force to knock over a dead, a dead tree or a sickly tree. And when a problem came and one person fell, it took out all the row of dead trees. But kind of, here's my prayer. If we would grow in faith together, we could be an unstoppable force in the kingdom of God. 100%. My backyard must have been farmland at one time because all of the trees were about the same size. They were about the same diameter, about the same height, whether it was an ash tree, a cedar tree, a maple tree, an oak tree, they were all about the same size, which means they were pretty much planted, pollinated from a, um, a bird's droppings to an animal's droppings to whatever. They were kind of all planted at the same time and grew together. We can grow together as a body of believers if we are consistent in our Bible reading, if we are consistent in prayer, and if we are consistent with filling our minds with wholesome things to be the healthiest version of ourself. Health is the key. I stand here today and tell you that I struggle with staying healthy. I do. I, I live a very aggressive, fast-paced life my vacations are more work. Uh, it, it just, I just need a mental break, but I still have to be doing things and accomplishing things. Um, I, I don't know my audience today. I don't know who's watching online, uh, but pretty much since I was a teenager, I, I've struggled with staying healthy emotionally, staying healthy mentally, staying healthy uh, not taking self-prescribed medications to cope with anxiety or, or not feeling like I'm enough or I'm accomplishing enough in my life, okay? Now, if I stand here today and that disqualifies me from being your pastor and a leader, I understand. There's a bunch of churches with perfect people that everyone else can go screw up. <laughs> but have we taken time to try to figure out how to be the healthiest version of ourselves. Do you know what the healthy version of you looks like? Do you know what the version of you looks like that is not angry all the time? Do you know that person? Do you know the person, the version of you, that when something bad happens, you don't fall apart, but you build yourself up? Do, like, do you know that person? Do you know the silly, laughy, joy-filled person that is in you? See, that's what community needs from you. Yeah. It needs the healthy version of you. Can I just interject? It's really important, as he's just saying, to not just project health. Yeah. It's really easy to go to the mall. Most people like to shop, buy a cute outfit, and project that healthy version of yourself. But if you're not healthy inside, it's gonna crack eventually. To continue with the woods theme, uh, we had this big tree that was actually gorgeous. It was this big, massive tree in the backyard and it had one dead branch. It was a huge, huge oak tree. And he went to just cut the branch off and the whole top of the tree fell off. 
To anybody else, it was a big, healthy tree. There was nothing about it that showed it to be unhealthy. But the outside can only last for so long. Your hair's rubbing the mic. Yeah, it had this dead branch, so since I had the excavator with the thumb, I reached it up and I was just gonna snap the branch off and the entire tree, now I tell you, this was like a 30 something foot tree with all these big, huge branches coming out. It broke in half, right in the middle. Yeah. I actually, funny, I actually abandoned ship. I dove out of the excavator and rolled across the lawn because I didn't know which way that thing was falling. <laughs> Scared me so bad. And I'm 41 years old now, so when you take a jump like that, it's not like you just get back up and you're good. I thought I broke my spine. You know, it was a whole situation. I laid there on the ground, <laughs> repented, spoke in tongues. See, I wasn't going to say all that now. <laughs> you thought it, though. You wanted to tell that side of it. I was the good wife. All right. She was sitting back just laughing at me as I rolled across the lawn. But the tree had uh, root rot. It was... Mm -hmm completely dead. The whole center of the tree was dead, um, but the outside was fine until you got up to um, about where the branches sprouted out, and it was, a perfectly, it was perfectly fine yeah. there, but it was dying from the bottom up. So either way, if I didn't touch that tree, the next storm, um, yeah. uh, the kids could be playing out in the yard, and they could have knocked that thing over. So mm -hmm. yeah, what are, what are you doing to maintain health? It is something that has to be intentional in my life. My wife knows that. In my life, we have to be very intentional yep. about our relational health and about my emotional health. And, and, and I'm just throwing this out there to you today. Like, if you need to see a therapist, if you need to see a counselor, that used to be a taboo thing in church. Just pray in the Holy Spirit and it'll work it all out. There's just some tools that people have that you can go talk to yeah. that will give you that little, that little help that you need to figure the situation out, right? We found out, Cindy looked this up, she told me that uh, willow trees talk to each other. Mm -hmm. They have a way of communicating to each other. That when a willow tree is attacked by webworms, they will release more tannin to their leaves to make them harder so they can withstand the, the eating of the attack of the, the webworms. But it also sends a signal out to all the other trees, the other willow trees around it saying, hey, it's webworm season, release more tan and protect yourself. Mm -hmm. That's how the body of Christ should be. They have each other's back. Yeah. They have each other's back. Now, now listen, I'm going to read a verse to you. It's so taboo in church, but this is the design of church. Are you ready? Galatians 6.1. Brethren, church, if a man, if a person is overtaken in a trespass, you who are spiritual, you who are healthy, yep. restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Considering yourself, how do you want to be treated if you make a bad choice? Yeah. Listen, can we just break it down to the simplest terms? When you're driving down the highway and all of a sudden there's red and blue lights in your rear view mirror. You look down at your speedometer, it's you. You praying in the Holy Ghost <laughs> real quick. Oh, God, have mercy. Oh, I don't want that $250 ticket. Oh, God, 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 Jesus, 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 mercy. Right? So we need to extend that kind of mercy mm -hmm. and grace yep. to those around us who may be, it, life isn't easy for everybody. Yep. Right? Watch this. He goes, but watch yourself. Or you may also be tempted. There may be some things that are happening in your life. Mm -hmm. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. This is telling us, and, and this design here, is to put spiritual protection around your friends. Build your friends up. Be there for one another. I'm going to tell you this. A study was showed, and I'm going to talk to the men for a second. A study was shown that 80% of men who were polled, who were asked, 
said they do not have another man that they consider to be a best friend. Mm-hmm. That, that, that 80% of men don't have another man that has access to their stories, their struggles, and their secrets. That 80% of men doesn't, do not have a close best friend who they can call at any time, be like, hey, I'm thinking about letting stupid out the box. Come help me out. I'm having a bad day, bro, what's up? Uh, like, hey, you good? You don't look right. Everything okay? That, that, that they can be open and transparent with it. Now, I'm only talking from the man side because that's all I know. I'm sure it can be just as hard yes. for females to find a best friend yes. that they know they can run to in a time of trouble. Mm-hmm. Remember this. You can't fall if you're not standing. Yep. And some people use that as an excuse to never get up. But I'm going to say it like this. Unbelievers, they can't fall. An unbeliever doesn't fall into sin. They, they are guilty of sin. Mm-hmm. Only Christians can fall. Only Christians can, can what they call it, fall from grace, can have a fall. And so as a body, as a community of believers, it's even more important that we can surround ourselves together to help each other and build each other up. It's so easy to stand back and, and, and for a tree to look at another tree and say, oh man, what a shame. You were such a good tree. To judge it for falling down. It's so easy to stand back and judge someone and shame them because they made a mistake. That takes no spiritual effort and it takes no spiritual maturity. What's harder than that is to help pick somebody up when they fall. But even harder each day to remember to pray for that person and lift them up in your thoughts to ensure that a fall never happens. That's the hard one. What we need is community. Community. If there's any spiritual attack that I would say is happening during COVID-19, it's the attack on community. Yeah, definitely. The ability to gather together in close proximity mm-hmm. with other people to build each other up. And even when we are around people, we're six feet apart. We're six feet apart, right? Throughout COVID, I think it's been the hardest for me having a breakdown of community, the loss of connection with friends, getting together with groups, not having barbecues this summer. Like, that was hard. We really lost our entire summer this year Mm -hmm. to this thing and what the restrictions were in our county. And in those times of feeling separation from friends and loneliness, it becomes very easy to be the person that tears others down instead of building them up, especially during a political season. Oh, yeah. Right? And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a very political person. I'm staying, I stay way away from it. I don't get into it in the pulpit at all. I'm just saying it would really be nice if one time, one commercial was actually about an issue not about how good I can bash somebody. It would be refreshing. I'm just, I'm just saying. It, it's easy right now in this season because we're lonely, we're hurting, we miss people to get on social media and make bad comments. Yeah. It, it's very easy to do that. Just remember this. Hurting people hurt people. If someone is saying something to hurt you, if someone is doing things to gossip about you, it's because they themselves are a hurting person. If you find yourself constantly speaking about negative things, then you need to do an analysis to find out what is it about me that I'm hurting that I feel the need to inflict pain on someone else. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this today. Who needs your help, and your support. Who needs your help and your support? I got a few phone calls this week. A few people that I am in close proximity to are in the hospital. 
uh, going through some very serious things. You know what I need to be doing? I need to be praying for them. Uh, we, we can't all go to the hospitals like we used to be able to, like hospitals and nursing homes, they're, they're being shut back down, way, way, way back shut down to, to not allowing visitors and that sort of thing in. So when we hear about something like that, we need to be praying and not just send the emoji prayer, but actually pray, yeah. right? Who needs you praying for them? Who needs a word of encouragement from you? Just think about today. Who needs a text thinking about you, love you? Who, who could really use that in your life today? Who needs a life-giving conversation? Who needs you to have their back? Who needs a Christian community surrounding them and holding them up in prayer? We know that we do. We know that we do. We know that we need people in close proximity to us who hold us up in prayer, hold us up in, in, in uh, good comments and good conversations. Because, I'll tell you what, this isn't always easy. This right here ain't always easy. I'll tell you straight out, 80% of our problems is me. It's me. It's my fault. It's me. It's me being too aggressive or dreaming too far out or... or wanting my own way, whatever it is, and then the other 20% are my fault. <laughs> right? Is that right? Is that right? Uh, I, I generally am the one who has to say sorry, who has to go back and start the conversation of the makeup, uh, be, because I do understand that approaching me could be kind of hard once I have said what I wanted to say. I'm the kind of guy, I say what I want to say, I'm good. I'm done. I have to realize it takes her about three and a half hours to process what I said. And then she wants to come back and talk about it again. And I'm like, what? Are, what? what are we talking about? I thought that was done. And then she has to remind me, well, you were done. <laughs> But I hadn't thought about my comebacks yet. <laughs> Close proximity and remaining healthy. At large, mm -hmm. I'm seeing people struggle because they haven't had the break. They haven't had a break. They haven't had their vacation. Yep. They haven't had the getaway mm -hmm. to get away from home and to just unwind and to refuel their mind. I want to encourage you. I just want to throw something out there today. What else are you reading besides the Bible that, that's not just an entertaining novel? When's the last time you read a self-help book? When's the last time you read a leadership book, a, a business book to, to, to make your mind think differently and refresh you in a different way? I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. Like my backyard... Our yard is a community of trees. It's what a forest is. Mm -hmm. It's a community of trees. And the thing about our backyard, I think we really only had about four species in our backyard, but we had oak trees, ash trees, cedars, and maples. That's pretty much the majority of the trees that were in that backyard. All different sizes, all different shapes, and right now, being in the Hudson Valley, all different color leaves. Mm -hmm. There's no better place in the Hudson Valley in the fall. Nowhere in the world does it look this beautiful. And we're actually on the tail end of it now. The trees are starting to get a little naked. But all different color trees, all different color leaves in my backyard growing in harmony and community. Yep. That's the picture of the church. Growing in harmony, communicating together, protecting and growing together, and that's my heartbeat. That's my dream for the church, the church universal. My dream would be that we would be what the Bible says we are to be. We're all going to have mistakes. We all have one or two flaws in us that we deal with on a consistent basis. Whether it's depression, whether it's addiction, whether it's anger, whether it's gossip, 
whether it's a sexual sin, whether it's some, some sort of other kind of thing, I noticed with every tree that I cut up, they all had a knot somewhere in the wood. They had a, knot. They had a flaw. They had a flaw. It's, it's the human condition. It's the human condition. Now, I could sit back and say, ah, I could really have made something beautiful out of that tree if it not for that knot. Or I could understand that it's the knot in the wood that makes that tree unique. Yep. It's the thing in our life that could destroy us that if we surrender it to God, he wants to use it to move his kingdom forward. I want to encourage somebody today. I need to encourage you today that, that God wants to use you in spite of you. God wants to use you in spite of, of what forest you find yourself in today. I want to close by asking some questions. Who has God sent you to this earth to be praying for? Whose answer to prayer are you? Who needs you to be their friend? There's somebody in this room watching online, watching this later, who is seriously dying of loneliness and they need you as their friend. Who needs your grace and your forgiveness? Have you been harboring unforgiveness in your heart against somebody? I could never forgive them. I could never get over that. They've ruined it for me. I could never. Well, who needs you to extend God's grace that he's extended to you to them? Are tree roots important? Absolutely. They're absolutely important. That's how they're fed. That's how they're nourished. But I've also saw that there were a couple cedar trees that had very, very shallow roots. Their roots were not big enough to truly hold them where they were. In fact, they were also then surrounded by a bunch of rocks. The reason why that cedar could grow and be healthy was because there was other trees around it keeping it upright. It is highly important to choose wisely who you surround yourself with. So let me ask you, who is surrounding you and who are you surrounding? Who is surrounding you and who are you surrounding? Who are you in connection with? My heartbeat in the next few months and definitely for January is to get our small groups program back up and running. We need to get our small groups program back up and running. We need to be able to get together with other believers for hobbies, basketball, softball, cycling, whatever, whatever kind of sports, for hobbies, painting, photography, whatever else. I don't know hobbies. Um, and then in home Bible studies, in home Bible studies, where groups of people take the Sunday message and they take it into their homes with five to 10 people and they dissect the scripture and they go through it and they grow together in the word of God. The primary reason we began our Wednesday night online Bible study was because we knew that people right now cannot have people in their homes like that. So we said, all right, since, since we know we can't do the in-home Bible studies and have other people do it, we'll do it from here, broadcast it to home so people can keep that going. But really, really, if you want to grow, start the Bible study at your house. Host a Bible study at your house. And maybe right now you don't feel that you're ready to teach it. Then watch the Wednesday night and then discuss it with people in the room. And, and it's that discussion. Here, here's what I know about small groups. Okay, the event is fun. The, the, the special interest is what we have in common. But that's not the point to a small group. Let's just say our small group's going to go hiking. We're going to be on that hike. We're going to climb a high point down at Port Jervis. We're climbing a high point. And all of a sudden, someone's going to come over. Hey, Mike, can I ask you a question? When you were my age, how did you deal with this kind of situation? 
And as we're on this walk, on this hike, me and this other individual, we're going to kind of hold back a little bit as the main group begins, keeps going, and we'll have this one-on-one -on -one conversation where I'm surrounding him, and he's surrounding me, and we're doing life together. We're figuring out life together. That's the power of the small group. My desire, my prayer, my dream is that today, maybe the Holy Spirit would put something on your heart to start a small group. Maybe it's a special interest group, maybe it's a hobby group, but maybe it is a Bible study group where you get together with other people and study the Word of God, holding each other up and not letting each other fall. That is the kingdom design. Anything else? No? Good? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for a word that is rooted and grounded into our hearts. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that this word will not return void, but it will accomplish exactly what it set forth to do. We thank you, Lord, that we're challenged to connect with other believers and hold them up throughout the seasons of life. Yeah. If you're here today or watching online, and you've never had an opportunity to connect to the family of God, the community of believers, the church. We would love to invite you to uh, commit your life to Christ through a prayer that we offer here at Family Church. And that prayer goes like this, if you would repeat it with me. Dear God, Dear God I, come to you, I come to you just, just, like, I am. just like I am. I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is my Lord, is my Lord and, my and my Savior. Jesus, Jesus I, invite I invite you into my life, into my life to, change to change me and to make me new. Make me new. Thank, you Thank you for accepting me. For accepting in, me. Jesus in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, if you're in this room today and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, I don't want to do anything to embarrass you, but if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you allow me just two seconds to celebrate you and just wave at me and say, hey, that was me. I prayed the salvation prayer today for the first time. Anybody at all, real quick, looking across the room? Nope. Yes? I'm right not seeing. Here. Right here. All right. <laughs> Congratulations. If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time today, could you hit that hand raise button or click the form and fill it out? We would love to send you our seven day devotional called Starting Point. It takes you through your first seven days in your walk with the Lord and really gets that growth going, gets those roots down in the ground so that you can begin your relationship with Jesus Christ. We'd like to invite you to grab one of those books at the Welcome Center on your way out as well. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for your word in season for us. Thank you. I thank you that we are blessed coming in. We'll be blessed going out. Everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you.